Social media is everywhere. It consumes us. Dictating what we see and how we act, it is taking over our world. As social media creeps into our daily lives more and more, the dangerous effects become more widespread. Who is benefiting from this grip that social media has on this country? Should companies such as Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook whose primary goal is profiting be allowed to have so much power over us all? When high school students were asked to describe social media in one word, this is what they said. Fake. Stressful. Toxic. Emotional. Superficial. Insecurities. Lies. Shallow. Forced. To gain a deeper understanding of this topic, we took it to our nation's capital, D.C. Hi, my name is Peter Romer Friedman. We've seen um, a lot of problems, including bullying um, on Snap and other social media sites as well. Uh, we've also seen drug dealing uh, occurring on, on Snap that's resulted in a lot of people dying of fentanyl poisoning. I've heard from parents, from teachers, from mental health professionals who are all wondering the same thing. How long are we going to let this continue? Social media at times feels all-encompassing, right? It undergirds a lot of our discourse around politics, culture, how we communicate with family and friends. So in one sense, social media just feels like the currency of communication in our lives. We're not talking about people leaving mean restaurant reviews in these cases. We're talking about people using social media platforms to terrorize others. Leaked files from Facebook prove that Instagram causes body image issues in one in three girls. Uh, Instagram has been documented to be harmful even by Instagram's own internal investigators and lawyers. A significant uh, portion of people who have suicidal thoughts, uh, teenagers, trace uh, those thoughts to uh, using Instagram. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think of social media is the expectations it puts on all the teenagers around the world. When I think of social media, the first thing that comes to my mind is likes and how like all of social media, whether it's Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok or Facebook is all focused around likes and how much attention you get from your peers and I feel like that can be really toxic. When I think of social media, I think of the need for external validation and comparing oneself to others, which ultimately leads to unhappiness. Senator Mike Lee had his staff create a Snapchat account for a 15-year-old child. These were the results they found. Uh, when they opened the Discover page on Snapchat, with its default settings, they were immediately bombarded with content that I can most politely describe as wildly inappropriate for a child. The solution to harmful content, harassment, and unrealistic expectations lies within reforming Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. So Section 230 is a law that was passed in 1996 as part of a much bigger law. And at the time, it was actually a pretty obscure amendment. Section 230 is a law that effectively in immunizes online services from liability as it's been treated by courts. For too long, we have allowed platforms to promote and glorify dangerous content for its kid and teen users. But in the way that it's been interpreted by courts, it's been treated much more broadly, effectively to immunize them from any misuse of their product by users and third parties. Section 230 is just an immunity. All that it does is uh, gives essentially a free pass or a get out of jail free card uh, if a company is held liable for violating some law. We see this catastrophic argument very frequently, this idea that any revision to Section 230 will be some kind of parade of horribles in which free speech as we know it will end. I think what's important to emphasize is that Section 230, as it currently exists in the US, doesn't exist in lots of other liberal democracies, and the internet still functions perfectly well, social media platforms still function perfectly well. Having a safe harbor 
that is narrower than the current contours of Section 230 will not impede on our right to free speech. The goal is to make it fair and to impose um, some, some more responsible rules uh, for companies to abide by. With technology surrounding us and the whole world at our fingertips, our only hope in protecting teens across the U.S. from being bombarded with graphic imagery, bullying, harassment, and unrealistic expectations is found with holding social media companies accountable.